the whole wide world was just so enthralled and, you know, glued to their phones and computers and TVs a few days ago, watching this fairy tale of a wedding between Harry and Meghan. For all the beauty and the preparations and really just what that wedding stood for, I had to ask myself, why do people still get married, right? In this day and age where divorce is at its highest, in this day and age where, you know, people don't seem to anymore care as much for the institution of marriage, where it's just really more convenient for people to just come together why do people still choose to get married? And I think among many other reasons why, of course, there's love, there's the, um, there's the belief that they were meant for each other, and all of these things. All of that are true. But one of the reasons I think people still get married is because they recognize one thing. They recognize that two people who are independent of each other, strong and, you know, good and happy, can actually be better when they come together. When you put two different sets of strengths together, when you put two different sets of values and beliefs, when you put two different sets of experiences, all of that together, there is power in that togetherness. And there is the potential that by coming together, life can get better, people can actually get better. And so I'd like to jump off on that. Now, the dictionary um, defines the word together as being in or in contact, connection, collision, or union. And when you mix all of these ingredients, they come together now. When you think about togetherness, or when you think about connections, there are different kinds of connections. There are different levels of connections. And so I really want to talk about that kind, that connectedness. In fact, I want to talk about relationships today and the value of relationships, specifically for our business. It has been said, and I have said, that ours is a relationship business. It's a business that has two components, relationships and the business. And the bottom line is we go into business to succeed. However, the reality is that the only way we can really build to last, the only way we can really succeed to last is if we equally put focus and attention on our relationships. When we have strong relationships and we are strong in the business, in skills, in doing the business, you put that, you become better in the business, all right? So what are relationships? As the dictionary defined, it's a state of connection, of union, and so forth. Now, when I was doing the business in my early years, I didn't know this thing about relationship business. And so as far as I was, I was concerned, I got into business. I learned how to do the business. I learned how to present. I learned how to invite. I learned how to close. I learned all of this and acquired skills that would make me succeed in my business. But I forgot and didn't know how equally important relationships were. So what happened? I was doing my presentations daily. I was doing my weekly, you know, network meetings and trainings very consistently, very passionately, very intensely, intentionally. However, after one year of doing this and building my network, one day I woke up to find two, my only two leaders in the business, all of a sudden disappeared. And what I built up for a year, all of a sudden went from hero to zero. And I had to wonder, what happened? Where did I go wrong? See, without relationship, when, when you build a business just on business alone without relationship, what happens is you duplicate the same thing. So because I was very focused on the business, I was very focused on, you know, signing people up and getting products sold and as many people signed up and as many products sold and as many people doing the same thing I was doing, they were duplicating the same thing. And they were not also focusing on building relationships. So 
that entire organization that I had built just disappeared like that. People will go into business with you because they like the business. However, if it's only about business, when they find another business, they will jump into that business because there is no other reason that they're with you in business except for the business alone. However, if there is a relationship component, if there is a strong relationship component there as well, people will think twice. They will look for another business that also has those relationships. And it's not easy to find good, lasting, strong, nurturing relationships. So if we do that and we duplicate that as well in our organization, it will be better for us and our organization will be stronger for us. It has been said that you can only succeed in business if you are successful in relationships. So let's think about that and let's look about and let's look at how we can become better in our relationships equally as we become better in our presentations and in our you know uh, closing and in our duplication of our business. Now looking at relationships as I said earlier there are different kinds of relationships. There is a relationship that I had, I have with my banker, right? I have a relationship with, the, with my dentist. I have a relationship with my neighbor, correct? I have a relationship with my husband and my, with my children. Are all of those relationships the same? No, they are in different levels, different levels of trust, different levels of trespass, different levels of in terms of how, how much I invest myself in those relationships. When I talk about relationship in our business, I'm talking about relationships that are equal, okay, at par with the relation, our closest relationships at home. Relationships that we invest our time in, relationships that there is trust, uh, that there is where there is trust, relationships where there are trespass. Now, how do we do that? One of the you know, questions that I was asked in my Facebook Live sessions is, how do I get people to join me in the business? And of course, it all starts off with three things, right? First is, you get people to know you, you get people to like you, and you get people to trust you. Let's break that down for the next few minutes in this video. How do you get people to know you? You actually have to go out there and talk to people, right? I thought I could build the business just by looking at the people in my family, just by talking to my relatives. I didn't have any friends, so I only had 10 people in my list. My, my brothers, my mother, my uncles, that was it. When I quickly depleted that list and realized that out of the 10 people I talked to, 10 had said no, I had to increase my list. And how did, I, how did I have to do that? I had to talk to people. I had to talk to people that I didn't want to talk to. I had to talk to people even if I was very shy, even if I was very um, insecure, even if I was afraid that they wouldn't like me. I had to get people to know me, right? Now, knowing me is one thing. I had to get people to like me. Now, do you know why I didn't have a lot of friends before? It was because I was not very likable before. If you knew me 20 years ago, you wouldn't like me. I was very shy, but I was also very arrogant. I guess that's what you call passive aggressive or whatever. I was shy and arrogant. My shyness, okay, uh, was actually maybe a cover up for the fact that I didn't really like people to know me and I didn't like to know people. But I had to work on that. I had to develop my people skills. I had to look at what I had. And what I had was a genuine uh, desire to help people. Looking at what I had, I used that to now look at how I could help people. They say the fastest way to gain influence is to solve someone else's problem. So that's what I did because I liked helping people. I looked for problems to solve. And as I solved people's problems, I became liked by people. And of course, the third one is getting people to trust you. How do you get people to trust you? By being authentic, by being real, by being uh, forthright, 
and not pretending to be somebody that you're not, not you know, um, saying things about our business that are exaggerated, not exaggerating claims in our business, not you know, pretending like you know everything about the business, like you're this expert, but really just being who you are. Because who you are, and once you're true to that, then people will trust you at that level as well. Now, of course, a relationship starts when people know you, like you, trust you. Does it end with that? How do you build that relationship? You build that relationship by working more on getting known, by working more on getting liked and increasing the level of how they know you, how much they know you. That means being vulnerable and exposing things that maybe you don't like to expose, but you don't expose that at the beginning. You expose that over time and getting people to like you more. And at the same time, because relationship is two-way, doing the same and taking the time to get to know the people in your team, to get to like the people in your team. Now, will you like everybody in your team? No. That's the truth. We like everything about the people that you like in your team? No. If I look at my fellow V partners, there are things about them that I don't like. Just like there are things about me that they don't like. However, being in a relationship is not looking for perfect because there is no such thing as perfect. Being in a relationship is really learning how to filter the good from the bad. Because we all are perfectly imperfect, we should not expect perfection out of people when we are ourselves are not perfect. So what do I do? I look for the good. If out of 10 things that they do, four are not so good and six are good, focus on the six. If there's only one that's good, then focus on that one and just look at that and, 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 and see how you can appreciate that person for that one good thing that's in them. So know them. Do you know their birthdays? I didn't know my leader's birthdays before. I didn't know their anniversary. So there was no relationship at all. The only connection we had was the business. Learn their birthdays. Know more about them. Know what the color of their couch is. Now you know the color of my couch. You're in my home. But do you know the color of their couch at home? The only way you will know the color of their couch is if you actually go to their home, right? And spend time with them. Drink a cup of tea with them. Drink a cup of coffee with them. Look at their family album, their photos, get to know them, invest time to know them. So because as you know more of them, the more you will like them, the more you will find things to like, and the more you will trust them as well. So in our business, there will be ups and downs. There will be challenges that we will face. And there will be imperfections in our business, challenges with the business. Okay. However, if the relationship came first and you build a strong foundation in your relationship, you and your team will be able to weather those challenges as well. So know, like, and trust. Stick with that. Stick with that with your prospects. Stick with that with your new signups. Stick with that with your team. Do Be that and duplicate that in your team and see how you can now have relationships that will start to become stronger, that will start to become better. And as those relationships start to become better, then your business will start to grow better together with them. I'd like to end by quoting a very popular and what has got become viral nowadays, uh, the one of the quotes that the Reverend Michael Curry in Harry and Meghan's wedding said. He quoted a quote by um, Martin Luther King, the late Martin Luther King, where he said that we must discover the power of love, the redemptive power of love. Because when we do that, we will make the old world a new world. For love is the only way. How can you be successful in our business? How can you become a max out king and a max out queen? Harness the power of love in everything that you do. 
the power of love will make your business. Your business might be struggling. You might be struggling in your business right now. You might be struggling in getting people to join you, in getting people to believe you. You might be struggling in keeping your team together. You might have all of these struggles in your business right now, as we all do at one point or another. Imagine if you applied the power of love in your team. Imagine if you started to look at your team through the lens of love. Imagine if you look at the differences and the difficulties you have in your team right now through the lens of love. What do you think will happen? And how do you think will that change the output in terms of sales, in terms of signups, in terms of people advancing in rank, in terms of checks growing? I think that if we harness the power of love in our business, then we will make the old world, your status quo, where things are today, the things that you don't like today, I think that you will see the new world as you harness the power of love. A new world where there is trust, where there is growth, where there is strength, where there is, you know, resiliency, where there is perseverance, and ultimately where there is success together because you have decided that the only way that you can grow and build to last is to do it together. Here's to you and your team becoming better together. Thank you and God bless you.